Classic Tales, Arabian Nights. The Third Calendar's Tale. The Third Calendar began his tale. His name is Ajib, son of a king named Kasib, who ruled over a large kingdom with a capital at one of the finest seaports in the world. When he succeeded the throne from his father, he visited the provinces under his care and sailed to numerous islands in his kingdom. He soon found sailing enjoyable, so he decided to embark on a voyage to more distant seas, commanding a fleet of large ships to accompany him on an expedition. After 40 days at sea, a terrific storm arose one night, causing them to lose their way. The captain realized their predicament and lost all hope, knowing they were near the infamous Black Mountain. This mountain was composed of adamant, which attracted all iron and nails, causing ships to break apart and drown their crew. At the top of the mountain was a brass dome supported by pillars, with a brass horse and rider on its back. As long as the statue remained, the mountain would continue to wreak havoc. By noon the next day, they were so close to the mountain that all iron and nails flew out of their ships, causing them to sink. Ajib alone survived by holding onto a plank and reaching the Black Mountain. He climbed to the brass dome and fell asleep from exhaustion. In his sleep, he dreamed of an old man instructing him to dig beneath him to find a brass bow and three lead arrows. He needed to shoot the rider with these arrows and bury the horse statue to nullify the mountain's power. The sea would then rise and a boat with a metal man would come to take him to another island. Upon waking, Ajib did as he was told. He found the bow and arrows, shot the rider, and buried the horse statue. The sea rose and a boat with a metal man approached. Ajib boarded the boat and the metal man rowed silently for 10 days until they reached an empty island. After landing, Ajib saw a ship approaching and hid in a tree. He watched as servants opened a trapdoor, bringing luxurious furnishings, food, and daily necessities underground. An old man then led a handsome youth below. When the servants and the old man left without the youth, Ajib approached the youth, who was initially frightened. The youth explained that his father, a rich merchant, had no heir until a dream foretold a son who would live only until he was 15 when he would be killed by Ajib, son of Kasib, 50 days after the brass horseman atop Black Mountain, was slain. To protect him, his father hid him here until 50 days had passed since the brass horseman fell. Ajib, feeling sympathetic, assured the boy there was no way he could harm an innocent person like him. He offered to stay with the boy for the remaining days, promising to accompany him until the 50 days passed. In exchange, he asked the boy's father to provide him with a ship to return to his kingdom. The boy, sitting on a couch, was happy to have Ajib's company. Over the days, Ajib grew fond of the boy, taking very good care of him. On the 40th day, the boy rejoiced, asking Ajib for a watermelon. As Ajib fetched a knife from a cornice above the boy, he slipped on the couch cover and accidentally stabbed the boy in the heart. Ajib, grief-stricken and in despair, lamented the tragic accident. Remembering that the boy's father would soon arrive, he climbed a tree to hide. The boy's father arrived to find his son dead and soon died of grief himself. Their servants wept for them and sailed away with their bodies. Ajib, left alone, spent several days lamenting in the underground room before realizing the island had moved closer to the mainland. He walked to a castle of red copper and met an old man with 10 handsome, one-eyed young men. They invited him in and, after a meal, smeared their faces with ashes, saying they deserved it. 
Curious, Ajib insisted on knowing their story. They prepared him by sewing a sheepskin for him and instructing him to wear it. A bird would carry him to a nest, where he would find a castle covered in gold. Following their instructions, Ajib found the castle and met 40 beautiful ladies who welcomed him, asking for his adventures. He stayed for 40 days with the ladies, sharing stories and enjoying their company. He saw 40 closed doors in the Grand Hall, one of them made of gold. Before they left, the ladies told him they were princesses from various kingdoms who had decided to live together in this castle. But every year they needed to return to their kingdoms for 40 days. They left him with their keys so he wouldn't be bored, but warned him not to open the golden door, or they would never meet again. Ajib promised them he wouldn't. After they left, Ajib started exploring the rooms, opening one door each day. Each room contained magnificent and curious things. After 39 days, he had opened all the doors except the golden one. Curiosity got the better of him, and he decided to peek inside. He fainted from a pleasant smell upon opening the door. Regaining consciousness, he entered and found a black horse, which he led outside. The horse spread its wings, flew him high, then darted to the ground, causing him to lose an eye. Ajib realized he had returned to the mountain and rejoined the young men who advised him to visit the Caliph's country. After meeting the first and second calendar, they arrived at the mansion. The eldest lady, after hearing his story, allowed him to leave but he chose to stay to hear the others. The next morning, the calendars and the ladies were summoned to see the caliph. The Grand Vizier told the ladies that they would forgive their offense in light of their kindness in letting them stay in the mansion, but in return, they needed to tell their story.